What's going on everybody and welcome to Mundoid, your one-stop shop for all things Project Zomboid. This week, a nice big blog post with a couple of cool screenshots and a video. Ooh, that video, it is so nice. So let's get right into it. Um, there's a lot to talk about here. A lot of it's kind of just their explanation as to what's going on. So we're just going to kind of hit it point by point and talk what it means for the game, what it means for potential release date. Ooh, I know, I know, I said the dirty words, release date, and uh, my opinion on the whole matter. So... The very first thing they talk about is uh, the recent Mundoids and this particular Mundoid, even last one with the interview, is that the new content being shown is more or less scarce. And what they're showing is um, more things about just kind of things they've been working on that were omitted or taken out in the earlier re release uh, releases. And they, they talk about the reasons why and uh, basically... The real gist of it is they're just getting down to business. At this point, it's a lot of just kind of making that sprint to the end. They can taste the end. I'm sure we could all taste it too. Uh, they're just getting really, really close, and they want to kind of just finish. So instead of pushing out something new for the blog every single week, they decided that, you know, well, we better get to programming, so let's just talk about stuff that's coming back. But this time we have some stuff to talk about. One of the things that was taken out earlier in the 0 0.2.0 .0 builds was the lighting. The lighting had been taken out uh, because with the new map, uh, the way things were working, they just it just wasn't working the way they'd like it to. And when they're talking about RC3, one of the big things is that it just wasn't working with the new big map in general. Um, but now it's back. They were able to figure out a way to make it work and not destroy PCs in the process and what it kind of does in general to, to the game. So here's a picture. We'll pop this sucker over. Open. And we'll take a look. I mean, the lighting's looking really good. It looks really atmospheric. The line of sight seems to be working nicely. Um, you can take, even take a look here at the inventory. And we have uh, some Moodles here, but overall the lighting's back in, so it looks really good. It's a lot more atmospheric, a lot more moody, so it's good to see that that working with the new map. And uh, that's really good, because I really think in this particular game, or this style of game at the very least, lighting is, is going to be more important than it is in other roguelike games. Um, and I, I call this game roguelike because there obviously are roguelike elements to it, if not entirely so. So it's good to see the lighting back in without destroying a CPU in the process. So that's really good. Um, other things they're talking about here is uh, basically the redesigning of some of the buildings. Now, if you remember in the older maps, and I know I've spoken about it before, some of the rooms don't even have bedrooms or bathrooms or any of that stuff. So they're talking here... Um, again, due to streaming support, we had to rethink how buildings were defined since it was entirely possible for half a building to exist sliced down the middle of the edge of the loaded area. Um, so this information is doubly important for the metagame since buildings way out of the spawn distance need to be in the game for the metagame to work. This is vital for making light switches work, etc, etc. So they're basically saying that the way the buildings are kind of designed now are going to be more... They're going to make more sense. It's going to be kind of just good overall as far as architecture is concerned um they're talking about how important it is for buildings to to be normalized to be uh regular for the way the metagame is works because the metagame the way it works if you don't know real quick rundown is that rooms have to be specified like this is a living room classified as such so certain loot can spawn in these certain areas um and a lot of the things they, they say apologize to map modders because i just believe uh, right, it's a mind. They made it a mind-numbing process, etc. But one thing that has made us realize is a lot of flipping buildings. So, good buildings are looking good. Uh, another thing to talk about is the zoom feature is going to be back. Or uh, hooray! A lot of people really liked the zoom feature, and I can understand why. Uh, being zoomed in that close made it really tense. You didn't know what was around every corner. You're kind of like almost in the same eyes as your character. I don't particularly play that way because I feel like a character can see much further. But you can zoom in again. Um, one of the reasons it was taken out in the earlier builds is because it basically put the computer through its uh, any computer through its paces unless it was a high-end machine even when it was in at 0.1.5d the latest official release of the game it even crashed some low-end machines because of the way it works but now you can set if your machine is a low-end machine you can still set the graphics to low and double size in and be fine so zoom in mode is back now we're going to get into the animations. The zombies have an idle animation now. Um, it's really kind of cool that they do now because, again, the zombies before, and, and Ringo D actually pointed it out to them, which I think is great, always were wandering around. They never stood still. They always meandered. And in, in zombie lore, a lot of it, if their zombies aren't doing anything, they're either like standing there staring at something or they're just kind of lying down doing nothing. Some of them may be slightly wandering around. 
Um, but they're talking about zombies now do have an idle animation for all to see. And it's actually really well done. I really like it. You actually can see it in the video below. Another reason to come check out the blog, obviously. Um, and all it does, and they're talking about how AI works a little bit now The with one zombie spotting you. Um, how it can its, no, its own noises can alert other zombies. And just a more natural effect of zombies peeling off of the horde. Say the horde's wandering in one direction. Zombies can peel off the horde now in a more natural manner. It come after you. I think that's really awesome. Um, again, it just really adds to the immersion level of this game. It's kind of going for with its RC3 release, so I'm super psyched for that. I really do think um, that with the more natural actions of any zombie, you're going to be seeing a lot more uh, immersion. But uh, we're going to talk about immersion here momentarily, um, basically with the shaders. So they're talking about shaders, a lot of technical garble uh, they talk about, but what really they they show off here and what this is one of the reasons you should definitely go check out the video is because on high-end machines shaders is going to be something on the highest graphic setting and it is going to look great um again go check out the video down below i highly suggest you go check it out the uh the shaders really make this game feel alive um they it's a lot of like you know, how things look at night with a flashlight or just a light source, um, wandering around in the dark. Um, it adds this, tense, this sense of immersion, the sense of tension that um, I kind of got early on when I was playing the game, when things were a, little more, a bit more um, fine-tuned, I guess 0.1.5D, just the sense of dread and tension that the game brings. And with the shaders, it actually kind of revamps that to a point of, okay, I can't see so far ahead of me what the hell is going on. I can hear them, but I can't see them. Uh, very similar to what happened in my uh, episode 39, by the way, of my Zomboid playthrough. Um, but this definitely makes it way, 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 way scarier for a lot of people. Um, and there's some new Zach Beaver music in there, so definitely cool to check it out. I really like the tune and the way he's kind of gone with the music. So things are looking phenomenal for RC3. And they even talk about things are going even so good as they expect it to be done much earlier than they have initially anticipated. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And the other thing to talk about is key bindings. You can kind of actually do your own custom key bindings, which is nice. Uh, not a big deal. Not a lot to talk about there. And last but not least is the link to a game called Darkwood. Um, I tweeted about it already because they, the link actually directed me to it. All I'm going to say is go check it out. You can either come to this blog and click on Darkwood or you can go darkwoodgame.com. That's all I'm going to say. The game looks freaking awesome. Go check it out. And uh, other than that, this has been a very solid blog. It just basically hints at that things are going to be much sooner than people are anticipating. Fingers crossed that they mean within a couple of months. We'll see. I'd love to get to know when they're starting to do inter internal testing. I'll be very psyched uh, once they post that up on the blog. Because as I said on blog before, once things kind of go into internal testing, we're not too far from a release. So, uh, again, a good blog. And there's a video for you guys to check out to see things, how they look. Uh, I highly suggest coming to check it out at Zomboid.com. I apologize, ProjectZomboid.com. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope this was useful to those of you who may not be able to actually read the blog. And uh, I will see you guys next week. And if you are new here, uh, feel free to check out my other videos. I've got reviews, previews, interviews, and first look. So thanks so much for checking it out, guys, and I'll see you next week.